In another video, we looked at calculating a thermal gradient assuming that heat is conducted by conduction, that it, heat flows by conduction, rather. And we used an equation that is derived from the Taylor series, where we have T is equal to Tz0, uh, the temperature at some depth Z is equal to the temperature at a reference depth, plus what we would get by looking at the geothermal gradient multiplied by Z, uh, plus the second derivative of temperature with respect to z multiplied by z squared. And in here we had the heat flux divided by thermal diffusivity, and this was equal to heat productivity also divided by thermal diffusivity. Well, we're going to play a game. There is a 1 over 2 factorial there in there as well. I, we're going to play a game at looking at something with relation to heat productivity. So let's say this is Earth's surface. Uh, heat productivity is related to the concentration of radioactive elements. So we have some concentration of uranium and thorium and potassium that decay to other things and give off a certain amount of heat. Well, the concentration of those elements are going to be much greater at the top of the crust and much more diffuse down at the bottom. So we can draw lots and lots and lots of dots up here and then some sparse dots down here. And it's really an exponential decay. Now, we don't mean in terms of radioactive decay. We just mean in terms of the concentration. So the concentration of uranium or the concentration of thorium would decay exponentially as we go downwards into the crust and approach the mantle. So we're going to have a new equation, one that is uh, in the textbook by Turcott and Schubert, that shows how to account for this in a slightly different way. So we're going to use the same kind of terminology we used earlier. So we have temperature is equal to, uh, at some depth, Z is going to equal be equal to the temperature at a reference depth, Z0. And again, we'll let Z0 equal 0, so it'll be Earth's surface. Uh, but in this new equation, well, we're still going to have a heat flow term here, but it's not going to be heat flow at the surface. It's going to be at some greater depth. We'll just call it M. I think they're using that presuming that it's the mantle, but it need not be. We have a lowercase k for thermal diffusivity. And then for our heat production term, it's going to look very different. We're not going to have a second derivative term. Uh, well, I guess it could derive from that, but we're going to have the heat flux at Z0, so at the Earth's surface. It, we're going to look at the difference between that heat flow and the heat flow at some greater depth, nominally the mantle. That will all be divided by thermal diffusivity but it will be multiplied by this fa factor h sub r, and then we will have a minus e to the minus z divided by h sub r. So this is, this h sub r is a distance over which the concentration of radioactive elements decays. So again, we're not talking about the radioactive decay itself, but we're talking about how quickly the concentration of radioactive elements decreases as we go from the crust to the mantle. And if you just want an example, the, the concentration of uranium in the mantle itself would be zero, whereas the concentration of uranium in the crust could be uh, 10 or 20 or even hundreds of ppm. And as we go from, let's say, 100 ppm to zero, that is a change that is thought to happen uh, by an exponential decay of those elements. So if we looked at the concentration of uranium uh, as a function of depth, and so depth here is z, and so let's say z is increasing to the right, it would be very high when depths are shallow, and then those that concentration of uranium would be very low as we get to greater and greater depth. So this equation here is expressing that decay, and it's this value hr, h sub r, that represents that depth interval over which the decay of concentrations of uh, radioactive elements goes from being very high, where it's going to significantly affect the local temperatures, to being very low, where it has no impact.
Uh, we're going to rewrite the equation. We'll erase the chalkboard. So we have t sub z is equal to t sub z naught plus j sub q at some depth, possibly the mantle. And then that'll be added to the difference in heat fluxes from the surface to, let's say, the mantle. Again, divided by thermal diffusivity. There's no 1 over 2 factorial here. Multiplied by this factor hr, and then 1 minus e raised to the power of minus z divided by hr. So if we let uh, jq be equal to, let's say, 0 0.03 watts per meter squared. That's a reduction compared to the JQ and Z naught that we used in an earlier video of 0 0.045 watts per meter squared. It's a little bit lower because we don't have the heat producing elements. Uh, and then we let the rate, uh, the interval over which the uh, concentration of radio elements, radioactive elements decays. Let's let that be uh, uh, 10 kilometers. And again, we'll let thermal diffusivity uh, equal 2.5 watts per degree centigrade times meters. Then if we put all those things in there, then uh, at a case of Z is equal to 5,000 meters or 5 kilometers, the temperature at that depth would be 113.6 degrees centigrade. So we get a little bit different of an answer than we got from the earlier kind of equation, and that's because the way we've treated the value of A is that in the prior equation we had this term uh, minus A over thermal diffusivity. We're getting rid of that instead of having a constant a uh, constant concentration of radioactive elements throughout the crust, we're letting those concentrations change, being very high at the top of the crust and decaying to zero amounts of radioactive elements as we go to some certain depth. And this fancier equation deals with that kind of variation.